Thank you very much for the intro. And hi, hi guys. Uh, great to meet you all. See you all virtually. Uh, I mean, as as JP uh, alluded to, I mean, my my um, I guess my space, my business is is uh, is business. You know, I mean, I, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that in, in a moment. And, and normally when I do these kind of talks, it's it's got a, a very heavy business bent. You know, it, it's um, it's tactics or strategies or success, uh, well, uh, um, business success related, um, I guess, strategies. But JP asked me to speak um, specifically about happiness and success, which I guess it was something that came off the back of a conversation that he, he and I had had recently. Uh, and it's something that I do, I guess, live and breathe. Uh, but uh, it's not, never something I've really had to, I guess, formally put into words or a plan uh, until today. So um, I've, I've decided to entitle my, uh, I guess, my talk, uh, How to Be Happy, Successful and Stress-Free All at the Same Time which actually actually does sound sound like the whole, the holy grail of uh, the holy grail of, of, of philosophies or, or, or activities uh, but you will you will have to have to forgive me if it's uh, if, if it's not beautifully put together because it's uh, I feel like a comedian testing new material here because uh, I've, I've never I've never actually done uh, I guess done this in a formal capacity but uh, when I, when I kind of put my notes together on it it's uh, it, it is very much something that you know completely embodies my philosophy so hopefully I can I can talk knowledge about it and I, and I always um, I guess I always like to do a Q&A at, at, at the end of at the end of any any time I talk so uh, you know whether you want to ask me questions about this at the end or or, or, or anything else then I'm, I'm I guess I always find I give best value and I get best value when it when it comes to questions so um uh, and also I think the, the reason you know we, we talk about happiness success uh, and then being stress free is because as JP uh, you know mentioned earlier, I truly believe it's impossible to be successful if you aren't happy. Um, I think you know we we are conditioned to use the word success uh, in a monetary in a monetary sense, you know, or a, or a medal sense if you like. So I mean, whether whether it's a, a businessman with money or it's a, an athlete who's who's won things or whatever, you know, success is is normally attributed to you know to, to that kind of financially tangible you know winner type aspect um but so many of those people in in every walk of life are so unhappy in or or rather so unsuccessful in so many other areas of their life that i do believe uh, that you can't use the word successful for anybody who isn't enjoy who isn't enjoying the life. Uh, and uh, I think you know if you, you were going to start comparing it to monetary things, I could show you uh, hundreds of thousands of much more successful poor people than you would have successful rich people because you know it, it, that 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 is just to me such a such a minor part of it all. And I and I kind of chucked in the the Brucey bonus of how to be stress free as well. Because I think uh, you know um, I, it ties it ties in a bit with some of my philosophies and uh, and, and strategies, uh, and, and I guess it also ties in with being being happy and being successful. That I think uh, you know, whilst it's probably impossible to be totally stress free, uh, you know, eradicating stress in as many ways as possible, uh, you know, d does go hand in hand with being with being happy and successful. So um, a little bit about a little bit about me. I mean, like I said, I'm. I'm I'm 41 now, although obviously with this Snapchat filter on, I, I, I don't look it. Uh, but I, I've been um, I, I've been in business um, all all my adult life, and I kind of dreamed about being in business you know, as as young as I can remember. Really, uh, my my dad had his own business, uh, nothing related in any way to what I do nowadays. But you know, I guess entrepreneurialism must have been you know, in 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 my blood, and you know, rubbed off on me, rubbed off on me in some way, shape, or form. And I always knew that I wanted to be in business. Um, and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I guess back then I wanted to be in business because, you know, if we're talking the late 80s, early 90s, it was very much the, the conception that you could, or the, the misconception nowadays, I would say, that you could only be really rich if you owned your own business. Uh, so it was always like, you know, you got, got to own a business, got to own a business. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to own one because that was, that was how, how I was going to make my money. Uh, and as a, as a teenager, I try, you know, I tried every get rich screen, get rich quick scheme possible. I'd be, you know, but buy, buying the Exchange and Mark magazines or anyone else who's old enough to remember that, and you know, te tearing out the classified ads and you know, s s sending off my uh, stamped addressed envelope and a, and a, and a ten pound check for a for a, a manual that was going to come back and, and teach me how to make millions. And you know, none of them worked, unfortunately. 
Uh, so I, I had to go into real business when I was about 19. I started to work in a family business, which was uh, which was a, a uniform business, corporate clothing. We made uh, we made career wear for security guards, bus drivers, um, pe- people like that. Uh, and it was a business that my dad had invested in, actually, that I went to work in, in sales. But it was surrounded with as many problems as you could possibly imagine. The customers didn't want to deal with us. The suppliers didn't want to deal with us. The bank, you know, the bank was trying to run a mile. Um, and... Uh, my dad had kind of retired at the time. He wasn't he wasn't really interested in getting involved in these problems, even though he, he understood and acknowledged they were there. And after much cajoling over the family dinner table, he he, he kind of finally allowed me to go in there. And uh, he basically said, you can't cock it up any more than it already is. You know, go, go, go do your worst. So I went in the next day. And I fired everybody apart from uh, apart from this, uh, this this little old guy that worked in the warehouse. I started that business from sc- uh, literally started it from scratch again. Uh, new new products, new markets, new suppliers, uh, new staff, new ethos, new, new everything. Um, although um, I guess I was doing it not not so much with a plan in place, just just all from gut feeling and and learning on the job and making mistakes and you know correcting and and, and learning again. Uh, and about three and a half years later. Uh, that business had gone from losing about three hundred thousand pounds a year when I took over uh, to uh, making our first annual profit of about thirty thousand pounds, and it wasn't you know the the, the the numbers weren't weren't big numbers. I mean, obviously the, the loss was, but the, the profitability wasn't a big number uh, even you know twenty years ago without all the inflation of today, it, it still it still wasn't a very very big number. But it was it was the principle of, of I guess what I'd learned and what and what I'd uh, you know where I'd taken it from and taken it to, and it was the best learning experience. I could possibly ask for, uh, and from then I left there, and and I and I, and I went to uh, I I went to work in leisure. I wanted to be in bars and clubs because as a 19, 20, 21 year old guy, I thought owning bars and clubs was a guaranteed license to be able to make money, drink beer, and meet girls, um, and um, that that was what I thought qualified me for that space. Uh, and I, I opened a couple of a couple of very unsuccessful pubs. And quickly progressed onto opening a strip club, which was uh, which was very successful, hit the ground running, uh, and really was the kind of springboard for the next four or five years for me, where I ultimately grew that business to becoming the biggest strip club operator in the UK. Uh, I branched off into other bars and pubs, to property, to juice bars, to finance business, and all, any, anything I could get my hands on. Because back you know, back then I felt completely untouchable. It was the it was the it was the days of days of easy finance, easy credit, and anything I touched. Seemed to go well because back in those days, anything that anyone was touching was going well. It was obviously more more naivety than uh, than, than um, I guess uh, common sense. But in 2008, um, when the when the credit crunch started to rear its head, uh, my empire started to crumble, uh, and within the space of about six or eight weeks. I went from you know probably an eight-figure net worth and you're know, riding high and living at large with staff and businesses and everything tickety boo to losing the lot. Uh, you know, one, one business was put into administration and caused a domino effect of everything onto everything else, uh, and ultimately resulted in both the corporate businesses going under and me being made personally bankrupt as well. And I kind of woke up in September 2008 uh, bankrupt, penniless, uh, father of a one-year-old daughter. Uh, and uh, uh, hus- husband to a, a probably a worried wife, um, and you know I, I'm, I'm trying to condense this story as much as possible so we can crack, crack on with the meat. But I just kind of want to set a bit of, set a bit of the scene for you really as to as, as to, to why I think what I think. Um, but at, at that point, you know, I, I was also I mean not only had I lost everything, I was also told by everyone around me that I would never get anything back again either because my reputation would be so tarnished and you know and and uh, financially and emotionally everything else so damaged that that was game over for me. Um, now whether or not that was supposed to be true, I don't know, but I very much took the view that I couldn't allow it to be true because as a, a you know I had a a wife who needed a roof over her head, a daughter who needed food on the table, and I always say I was never born to be poor. So I could stay stay, stay at home, uh, you know, watching Jeremy Kyle and you know saying woe is me, or I could get back out there, get on the horse, and uh, again and, and get get some work done. And for, so from kind of 2009 onwards, I I started from scratch and rebuilt the businesses um, to, I mean, ultimately more successful than they were in a shorter space of time because of all the all the learning experiences and I guess you know the the contact and the knowledge and the snowball effect I've had I've had over the previous five six seven years. 
we fast forward to today, I've spent the last seven or eight years uh, purely uh, being a lender and investor to, uh, to, to UK businesses. I kind of got tired of operating things, you know, seven or eight years ago, just really because like JP says, you know, I, I love work and I am a, a workaholic. But, you know, when I was running leisure clubs, being awake through the night and, and non-nighttime businesses being awake through the day and never sleeping between any of them, I think it finally took its toll and I, uh, I, I decided to... Um, wrap up the leisure, concentrate on the finances. And for the last seven or eight years, I've very much just used my experience uh, to, be a, to, be, to be a better lender and hopefully help my customers be better borrowers, uh, you know, be an investor, be a partner, be an advisor, mentor. And really, I guess my, my sales pitch to my customers is I was a borrower before I was a lender and I'm a business person, not a banker. So you'll have a, a, completely, different, uh, a completely different experience dealing with me. But all of my I guess all of my stories, all of my advice and knowledge is all built up on my years of mistakes because you know I very much believe that you you know you learn nothing from the things that go right and only really from the things that go wrong. Uh, what I now have learned uh, after many years of making my own mistakes is I could probably have had that same knowledge from learning from somebody else's mistakes. It would have been would have been faster and cheaper than learning from my own, uh, and uh, that's you know why I'm now. Uh, you're very, uh, very much a believer in the concepts of mentors. I mean, I, I did have them years ago, but I probably didn't realize it at the time. Uh, but now it's, you know, it's something I live and breathe and absorb. Um, but that's, 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 where, that's where I am today. You know, I, I now live in Dubai. Uh, JP and I see each other out there now and again. Uh, but I've got, you know, very, you know, very financially successful. I was about to say successful, but we'll, we can't use that word without happiness. But I've got a very, very financially successful uh, group of businesses in the UK. Uh, I live between Dubai and Europe. Uh, I have a 16 year old daughter, uh, a girlfriend and everything is, uh, you know, everything, everything, everything is good. But for me, everything's good, not because of, uh, I guess, of the business and the, uh, and, and, and the monetary things, which I guess is what I was setting the scene on, but because I do very much love life, very much love the game, very much love everyone around me, um, and or rather that I choose to have around me. So um, I guess that's why JP wanted, to, wanted me to talk about this. So what I've done is I've, I've, I've kind of laid out my, what I would say is my 10 tips, strategies, you know, uh, reason, reasons, if you like, of, of how to be happy, how to be you know, successful, to be stress-free, to, to, uh, to, to be worry-free and not, to not be a moaner. So uh, I'll crack on with those now uh, and, we'll, uh, uh, and ho hopefully we can, we, can, uh, we can have a chat or a bit of question time at the end. So for me, number one is, you know, and I say number one it's because it says number one, maybe not in the order necessarily, but I think having a reason why, you know, having a purpose is, is, is so important. And I know it's, it's probably something that's said in a bit of an airy-fairy way now, nowadays on social media and everything else. But I think, you know, even if we don't, even if you don't know it, you know, we probably all do have a purpose, you know, a, a reason why anyway. Uh, but I think the more you can define that and, and own it and, and, and spell it out, you know, the, the, the more, I guess, the more successful your journey will be. But I mean, you know, one, one thing I do find, you know, I don't, I don't moan really about anything. I don't complain about many things because I think for me, my purpose and my goals are so clear. And I think, you know, and I was talking about this with a girlfriend recently, you know, when we'll, you know, let's say, have a, a spat that, you know, she's not happy in a restaurant, you know, she wants to moan about the food in a restaurant or the fact that, you know, the air conditioning's not hot enough or whatever in the car. And none of these things ever bother me. I think for me, the reason is that, you know, that I have goals and dreams that are so big that the problems are just utterly insignificant. Now, that's not to say I don't have problems. Of course I have problems. But my problems make the, the, whether or not the steak has come out warm who gives a shit you know whether, whether or not the air conditioning is going to be hot or cold in the car I can't even give it a thought because I've got such big goals that they come with such big problems that the, you know that the, the minutiae of, of, of day to day life uh, just 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 doesn't even affect me I think that's that's very you know maybe I've not explained that in the clearest way but I think for me that's very very important to you know as a, a non-stress factor and, and, and as, a, as, a, as a not being a moaner. So have, have, a, have a goal, have a clear purpose. Uh, and and, ha and the big, I think the bigger those goals, the more insignificant all, all, all the other problems or you know, inverted commas problems will be. Um, I think when it comes to problems, I think it's very important, to, this is number two, that you, if you realise that all problems that you've got have already been experienced and solved, by somebody else before you, 
Um, and then that really hammers home the concept of of mentors or having that having the right people around you that you know that you can learn from that you that you can take things from. And that, you know, I often get involved in let's say stressful situations at work that you know a lot of my staff will say, well, why is, why is Matt not stressed about this? And the reason I'm not stressed about it is because I've probably been through it before, or if I haven't been through it before somebody else that I know has and I can go and you know I can go and absorb their knowledge or, or their experience but you know I think we, you know, we always get hung up on problems you know we get stressed out by problems and I you know and I I always say that for me when I look at any problem can it result in death or can it result in bankruptcy and if the answer is no to either of those two things then I almost think I haven't got a problem because it's it's probably reversible in reversible in some way shape or form um but that is also because you know i've i've experienced so many things that that that, that I've, I've got that i guess i've got that practical knowledge knowledge to apply to apply to it i think number 3 is you know your your environment and your people the, the environment around you and the people that you have in that environment you know really are everything when it comes to when it comes to your growth your success your, your your happiness your your stress freeness um and I, I, you know i think it's important to realize that you know as you change you know you can outgrow the people around you it, it can often be a you know, very horrible thing to say or to or to i guess to to want to admit but you know we, we aren't the same people now that we were 20 years ago or 10 years ago or five years ago uh and maybe some of the people around us have, have grown in the same way we have or, or gone in the same directions that we have but you know just because someone was your childhood friend you know just because someone was your brother your father your mother whatever doesn't you know doesn't necessarily mean they are the right person to be around you in a particular situation now to you know to bring out the best in you and and, and to help to help you hit, you know hit your goals i'm not saying that you know you you need to go on a wholesale cull of uh, you know of, of of everyone in the locale, uh, but I just do think it's important to 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 be aware whether or not the people around you are aligned with you know with with, with your goals and, and and your journey. And when I when I do talk about think about stress, um, I think for me most of the times that I do get stressed about something, it's normally when somebody else is causing me it because. You know, I've I've probably allowed them in. I've I've allowed them into my space. I've probably let them stay there too long, and it'll you know. And I am you know, I, I am quite soft in, in in many ways. So you know, I'll I'll probably allow badly performing staff to 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 last longer than they should do. And when, and when I do sometimes you feel a bit grumpy and take stock around me and think, you know, what what is it that's uh, that's pissing me off right now? It normally comes down to a list of people who have been you know, around me taking cash and not and not and not giving a result for it. And when I go and have a have a cull of those people uh, and you know kick 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 them out and uh, I guess clean the decks. All of a sudden, I feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders. Now, obviously, that's for me in a monetary sense, but I think you know we can all all translate that to people around us who suck negative energy and uh, and, and bring and bring you know bring nothing back to the party. Uh, what else? It's very important to not try and control the uncontrollable. I mean, that is a hundred percent for me. Uh, you know, something something that makes you makes you very stressed and, and prolongs a situation that doesn't need to be there. Yesterday, prime example, I was in I was in Derby yesterday. I left my meetings at half past three, got in a taxi to head to Liverpool Airport. Uh, halfway to Liverpool Airport, my travel agent called me and says, bad news, the uh, your, your, your Liverpool flight's been cancelled. Uh, I said, what can we do? She says, there's a flight to Birmingham, there's a flight from Birmingham at six o'clock in the morning. Do you want to take that? I said, is that, is that all there is? And she said, yeah, that's 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 the next that's the next flight. So we'll get me on that because I've got meetings in in Spain, so I need to be on it. She rings me about two minutes later. She says, sorry, that flight's gone as well. There's going to be nothing until ten or eleven o'clock tomorrow morning. I said, and today, and she's saying nothing because there is, um, uh, you know, she was looking at up north. I said, what if we go down south? What if I took a flight to Gatwick? And there was a gastric flight at quarter past six. I says, "Fine, get me on it because I've got to be. I've got to be in Spain just after breakfast time." Now, obviously, that situation is you know, pretty, let's say, horrendous. Obviously, we can't compare it to people dying. But I've just found out <laughs> that I'm now going to have to spend the next 15 hours between you know, between an Uber, a travel lodge, 
miss, miss my flight, miss my missus, not eat have my dinner in Spain and just have a total ball ache. But the second she'd given me that bad news, it was in one ear and out the other. And I just got on with how I was going to spend the rest of the afternoon and the evening because there is nothing I can do about it. I mean, there is just nothing. And other than anecdotally telling someone on the phone that that's what's just happened to me, I didn't really give it a second thought. I didn't let it dwell on me. I didn't moan about this. And why? Why, why is the flight being cancelled? I, I can't tell you why the flight's being cancelled because what line is it doesn't matter to me because I can't uncancel it. So let's you know let, let's let's not let's let's not let it dwell on me in in any way. And I'm sure we've all you know we've all got comparable to that. But you know ultimately it comes down to trying to control something that's out of our control, whether that's a physical thing or whether it's people. And that's another big thing as well that you know I think you know we can we can try and change people, we can try and you know mold them into our way. And I think you know I've, I've learned uh, you know it's taken me probably too many years to learn it, but learn very clearly that you can't change other people. You know they'll be the ones that change themselves. You can't change them. All you can change is how you, is your reaction to them, how you deal with them. And maybe that how you deal with them is that you kick them out, you know, kick them out of your life full stop. Or maybe it's that you change the way you talk to them or whatever it may be. But you can't change them, and that is you know the uncontrollable factor. What is next? Number five, uh, love what you do. Uh, I said that for a few reasons. I mean, you're, you've got to love what you do because life's too short not to, uh, and there's just too many options out there of things that you could love instead. And I think, forgive me for speaking fast, by the way, guys, I'm just conscious of the time. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, this, this, this applies to work, to friendships and relationships, because I think it, they are the three most important things in our life, you know, work, friendships and, uh, and, and relationships. And the reason I say work is because, not, not because I'm saying, oh, you know, we should all be, you know, uh, super successful entrepreneurs, but because work will feature in all of our lives in some shape or form, whether that is, you know, whether we work in a charity shop or whatever, but it, it consumes at least 40 hours a week of our life in, you know, in some way, shape or form. And I think, You've got to be happy in your work. You've got to be happy in your relationships. And you've got to be happy, happy with your friends. And I say happy, okay, look, 90%, we're all going to have little tweaks of problems in those things. But they're all changeable, you know, it, it, within reason, they're all changeable. You know, th there's no need to be in a job that you don't, don't like. There's no need to have friends around you that you don't want to be with. And there's no need to be, have a husband, wife, you know, Mr. Mrs., whatever, who, who you don't get on with either. Uh, and I think, you know, we all, I, think, I can't speak for you guys, but we've all got plenty of people that we can look around and see that guy is always miserable. He hates his missus. You know, he never wants to go home to her. He hates his job. He probably doesn't even get with his friends. And why? Because it's actually, if you, okay, it might take a bit of bullet biting to sort it in the beginning, but it's not the most difficult problem to sort. Um, and, you know, it, it will... You know, the, the, the knock on effect from all of those and, and the happiness it will create or the inability to be happy without sourcing it is, is, is absolutely is absolutely crucial. So you know, they're, they're the three things you've got to get right. And, and they are very, very easy to do. Along with loving what you do, uh, I think you've got to love the process. And I think this particularly applies to work, to, is to having a business. But I think, you know, when I was rereading, I think you can apply it to anything. Uh, and the reason I say I love the process is because uh, obviously too many people are focused on the results of something. And that's why they do it. You know, they, they go into business because they want to be, you know, they want to be a millionaire or they, they go and play football because they want to go and play for Man United. Um, but ultimately, you know, the, 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 these big goals, um, you know, okay. Whilst we can work towards them, and, and and I guess you know, the more the more we work, and there's there's plenty. That's probably a conversation for another day about how to be, how to get closer to your goals. But the reality is, when we set these audacious goals, the chances of us hitting them are slim. And if the only thing we're focused on is is the is that goal for the end result, then most of us are going to end up pretty disappointed. And I think that's why it's so important to actually love the journey. Because what I wrote down when I was doing this is I said, love the, love the process because the results may never come. Um, and, you know, <laughs> so, you know, when I, when I start a business, for example, you know, okay, yes, I'm trying to make some monetary goal at the end of it, but there's problems I want to solve along the way. There's people I want to work with. There's things I want to do. And I know that whether or not I hit that seven-figure goal or eight-figure goal or whatever it is I may, may do or may not do, I will have loved the process along the way because it's, you know, it, it's grown me, it's made me smile, it's, it's done whatever. And, you know, you can all apply that to, you know, to, to whatever your, your walk of life is. Uh, we're nearly there at the end. I think you've got to learn to embrace failure. Uh, I mean, I get that ties in with the last point of loving the process and maybe the results won't come. But I think you've, you've got to learn to embrace failure because there cannot be success without failure. 
uh, you know, as I said earlier, that you know, I think you only learn from the things that go right, so go wrong and not go right. Uh, you know, fa failure is so fundamental to success that if you can't learn to see failure as a learning experience and something that's going to put you one step closer to your goal, then you're going to spend your time stressed, grumpy, uh, and uh, you know, ultimately probably unsuccessful. Um, by the way, that's not that's not permission to repeat the same mistake over and over again and uh, uh, be an idiot. But you know, it it is it is permission to not be afraid to take risks and uh, you know not be afraid when they when they when they don't work out. Uh, the penultimate one, I have to include this because JP's on the call. I think I've put exercise. I mean, we, we might be able to rephrase that. To, you know, whether it's fitness, health. Or whatever, but you know, exercise is something that's so important to my life. Uh, I mean, I think JP has very much been someone who's brought that out, brought that out in me. I mean, I've probably been an accidental practitioner of exercise in the past, but you know, I mean, now it's something that's so fundamental to me. Um, but he, he, you know, even if that's just w walking at night with my headset on, listening to a podcast, or you know, keeping my legs moving while making phone calls or something in the day, uh, you know, I, I think. Um, you know, again, if you haven't got a, ha a happy body, you know, a successful body, uh, then you can't have a successful mind. And if you haven't got a successful body and mind, you know, you can't be happy uh, and therefore, therefore can't be successful. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny because when I learn from other people, I like to learn. Uh, I, I like to learn from the bits that I think can be applied to me or can, you know, can, can be taken on. Uh, and I, I don't think you can wholesale copy anybody because you know we've all got our own different things i think that's, that's a, again a big big mistake for people particularly when it comes to money and people will say for example like, oh you know look at warren buffett you know wouldn't you just love to be warren buffett well absolutely not no i mean do, do i think you know, do i think warren buffett is you know a phenomenal you know financial genius etc well 100 percent to do and yes there's so much i could learn from that but you know do i want to be a guy who sits there with a Hot belly, eating, you know, drinking diet coke, and eating burgers for every single meal of the, meal of the day, and and and, and you know, and li living in the same house for the last 65 years because he doesn't want to spend any of the money that he's you know, he spent his life creating. Well, absolutely not. You know, I want I want I want to pick the pick the best bits. And too, too often when you see you know wealthy people, you know they they they're grossly overweight. They you know they they they're, they're completely unhealthy. Uh, and for me, that is just such a stumbling block to, you know, to, to, to being successful in, in any other walk of life. Um, and the final one for me, which uh, I think, uh, you know, if you just have to pick any one of these, I think that this is maybe the most important. I think that happiness ultimately is, is, a, is a matter of perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, I think for me, that's why I probably... You know, do always find myself smiling because I I look at the glass being half full as opposed to as opposed to being half empty. Um, and you know, you know, for example, yesterday, you know, missing that flight yesterday, I could have focused on missing the flight, or I could have actually well, what, what I genuinely did was think, oh, you know what, I'm kind of glad that flight's cancelled because I never had a chance to go to the gym this morning. That's given me an extra four or five hours. I'm going to get a workout in, have a sauna and steam room, um, and that's 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 how I kill time until, until the flight. You know, and when I talk about some of my darkest days in the past, uh, you know, when when I when I'd uh, I was gone bankrupt, you know, a story I I often go to is that I was with my ex-wife at the time, and we were we we're in the house, you know, um, get, get, getting dressed ready to go out, and she had a Range Rover, and she still had this Range Rover even from when I'd gone bankrupt, because ultimately we knew it was going to get repossessed, but it, you know, these things don't happen in a heartbeat. You know, it, it, it can take weeks or months by the time the creditors come and take everything, and she was still driving this Range Rover around. And we, but we knew it was going to go. Anyway, this one particular night, we were, we we're about to get finished getting dressed, dr drive to the restaurant for dinner, and she comes running into the room screaming, Matt, Matt, look. And I looked out the window, and there was a tow truck there, and someone was lo load, loading, loading the tow truck onto the, um, uh, sorry, lo loading the Range Rover onto the tow truck, about to take it away. And she's like, look, they're taking the car away. What are we going to do? And for me, this was just you know, the, a perfect example of a matter of perspective. Of, I said, well, we're going to take an Uber, and we're going to go to dinner. Because you know, I, I can I can focus focus on the fact that the you know that the car's been taken away, or I can focus on the fact that I knew that car was going to go. It's it's not that they took it away before dinner. It's that we had eight weeks driving it when you know, when we probably shouldn't have had any of those eight weeks. They were just slow to come and collect it. And I would rather think about I'm going out with my wife to have dinner to have fun, and the, you know, and we, and we deal with the car another day. And also, you know, a few years ago I was stuck in London. I was in London. I was in the car. 
uh, and I didn't have any money. I, I didn't have enough money physically in the middle of a bankruptcy. I didn't have enough money to put petrol in the car in London. And I was sat in there with my girlfriend at the time and, and my daughter, who was a bit older. Uh, and I had, to, I had to ring a friend and ask him to you know, send me some money so I could put some petrol in the car. And again, never did, did, was that like a crying moment for me, because for me, the perspective of that was, well, I might not have petrol, but I have got a car. Uh, and you know, I, I can I can I can sit sit, sit and focus on the negative on the fact that wh why have I got no money for petrol? Or I've got a, a girlfriend here who I have great fun with. I've got a daughter here who I love. And again, look, we haven't got time for example after example, but you know where I'm going with it. We can, you know, it, it, it's all it's all a matter of perspective, and you can uh, really believe you can completely create your own happiness because because you are you are in charge of that perspective. Um, and that, that, that's it, guys. That's my magic, magic box of tricks for how to be happy, successful, and, um, and uh, stress-free all at the same time. So uh, I, hope, uh, I hope some of it, some of it resonated with you. I think it, all of it can be applied, really, whatever walk of life you're in. I mean, some, uh, there's a lot of similarities and links between it. But uh, if anyone wants to talk to me, ask me anything, uh, I am, uh, I'm all ears. Matt, thank you so much, man. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoy that. I'm just going to quickly summarize what Matt has shared in my own words, or written in my own words. Uh, number one, have a reason why you've got to know your purpose. Number two, have the right mentors around you uh, because all problems that you have have already been solved. Number three, importance of the environment and then people in your environment. Number four, don't try to control the uncontrollable. This is a big one for me. Great reminder. Number five, love what you do and who you do it with. Number six, love the process, not just the result, because the results may never come. That was a mic drop for me, uh, because uh, so, so true. If you focus just on the result, man, you're going to lose so much joy in life. And I think that's what you've really nailed, Matt, is loving the process. Because if you love the process as much as the result, then actually every day is as successful as the next. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, 100%. 100%. Uh, number seven, learn to embrace failure. Failure is fundamental to success. Don't be afraid to take risks. Um, I think I missed one, but uh, exercise uh, because a successful and happy body equals a successful, successful and happy mind and life. I wrote that in my own words. Uh, and then the last one, happiness is a matter of perspective. Always choose to see the glass half full, which you certainly do, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, guys, I'm going to hand over to you. I know, I know we've overrun, but Matt's offered some time uh, for questions. So uh, there might have been a couple that came in, or maybe or one. I might go to that one first, uh, and then we'll hand over to anyone that has questions in the room. Uh, Mark Bryant asked, Matt, what is your purpose? Well, my, my purpose is to be happy. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to love life. I mean, that, I guess that's that's my that's my master purpose, if you like. I mean, if, if, if we're going to get a bit more, bit more granular, uh, you know, when we talk about business, you know, I, I like to be involved in in, in in businesses where I feel that I can add value, where you know, where where I can solve a problem, where I can work with, you know, where I can, I guess, feel success from solving that problem. Uh, which hopefully will will transpire, you know, with 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 monetary gains. But you know, I, I want to. I just I want to be happy with people, you know, spending my social life and spending my work life with people that I, I want I want to enjoy that with. Uh, I know that sounds it might not be, um, I guess, you know, the the laser focused answer you may you may have been expecting from it from a, from a business perspective. But you know, this this happiness thing is just so so fundamental to me in everything that you know if if, I, if I'm not happy if I'm not smiling then everything else is irrelevant. Now, obviously, you know, there's some money and material possessions and stuff comes with that for me just because, okay, I, 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 that's what I like. I'm not saying that's not right or wrong. It's just what I like. But with all the material possessions in the world, if I wasn't smiling with people I want to smile with, then, then, then the money means nothing. And one thing JP and I talked about when we filmed the video at some point was about cars as well. I think this is where it really started to focus, it started to focus for me that I, you know, I always used to want to, want to have cars. You know, I, obviously as a young guy, you know, you want Ferraris or Lamborghinis or Rolls or whatever. And when I do, you know, when I'd achieve certain things in work, you know, I'd, I'd buy that car and I'd have it. And within a day, a week, you know, and certainly less than a month, I was not driving it anymore. The novelty had completely worn off, and it just it just it just sat there in the garage or or, or, or parked in the house, because ultimately, you know, th these these were just 
monetary things that I was picking up along the way that weren't going to change my happiness in any way. I mean, okay, fine. Obviously, I'm happy that first time of taking the car for a spin and it puts a bit of a smile on my face. They don't change my life. You know, they don't just don't change my life. And uh, in, from the business perspective, are there specific sectors or is it more about the people? Um, is it more... Yeah. Um, in business, in business, I like to do I like to do things I understand with people that I want to work with. Um, and I say things I understand because, look, you know, I, I always say I'm a kind of a, a meat and potatoes uh, investor or businessman. You know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not really into into tech and into uh, you know into into you know, I guess you know Web three and all all the all the fancy things that we that, that I probably use in my day to day life to, to make it more smooth. But I don't understand how all that stuff works. You know, I'm a I'm a bit more old school. I like leisure. I like retail. I, I like to you know, see how I can take a pound and turn one pound into two pounds and, uh, uh, and, 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 and you know, see and understand the journey along the way. So, um, you know, in terms of businesses, I like to invest and fund. I like businesses that have already proven the concept. Uh, you know, I, I ideally like profit. I certainly want revenue. You know, I've, I've made too many mistakes on startup businesses. And that's, again, that's not, that's just about me knowing me. That's not the right answer for everybody. And, you know, somebody will tell me that I miss out on hugely profitable opportunities by not getting in on day one. But I just know that you know, the times I've got in, got in on day one, I've cocked it up more times and I've got it right. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess that goes back to, you know, removing the stress factors. I can have a, I can still have a, a successful and slightly stress-free life by by joining the uh, joining the business journey a bit later down the line. Matt, I've got uh, one question from Cheryl. I've also got a question for you. Cheryl's question: Do you choose more ethical business adventures now? Does does that matter to you uh, after the strip club experience? Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess ethics are arguably uh, are arguably something that's a sense of perspective as well. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I, I mean, I'm 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 pr I'm pretty liberal with mo with most things in life, you know. I mean, as, as long as as long as it's uh, legal and not utterly offensive to the masses, so then uh, I think I think that's pro probably past my past my bar bar of ethics. Amazing. Also, from me, what would you, in your opinion, what is the number one ingredient? for success sorry mate I, I saw you speak but i didn't hear you so say that again oh sorry in your opinion what is the number one ingredient for success well, well uh, is, oh, what what kind of success are, are we talking because i mean obviously i mean the whole the whole crux of this talk for me has been that you know you, you can't you can't be successful with it without being happy therefore I would argue that happiness is that is is that number one ingredient for success. But I mean, is, is this more of a business question? Or? No. So basically, I mean, this is Live 100, right? So this is all about clarifying your values, what matters to you. In your case, it's happiness. Success would be achieving whatever you value, right? Whether that's happiness, financial gains, etc. So to close that gap between where okay. you are, and where you want to be in life, what's the number one ingredient in your opinion? Well, I, I, I think. I think to to be to say you've achieved success, you, you you've got you've got to actually know what that success mean, means to you. Because again, you know, we we often let you know we often too often let other people dictate what success is. And I think you know I always say that you know you need to set your stall out of, of what of what what success what is success to you. And if you set out there to to go and make you know a billion pounds uh, and you make two hundred and fifty million, then I would say you're not successful. Because you, 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 you've not you've not done what you set out to do. If you set out there to be, you know, the the, the best the best husband to your wife, the best father to your kids, um, and you know, and and to, and to be at home, you know, to always be at home, you know, providing love and emotional support to everyone, and you achieve all of that, but you're absolutely flat broke, then I would say you're a roaring success because you know because because you've you've done it. So I guess I've kind of probably found the answer. By, by saying it out loud now, I guess self, self-awareness is probably utterly crucial to success as well. And, you know, and having your own mind to be able to, to be able to decide and dictate what that success, what that success is. I mean, do not let anyone else tell you what, what your success is. Awesome. Great answer. I have another question actually that's just come up. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. So uh, you, you mentioned before something along the lines of uh, things going wrong in your life. And then I can't remember the words you used, but sitting on the sofa and, you know, saying, woe's me. Um, 
you need to go out there and make the changes that you want. You need to go out there and get the results that you want. You know, we've, uh, we've had numerous conversations around, I don't like to say the word networking, but just to, to, so you have an understanding, that's where I'm going about networking. You know, we're here in a mastermind community. It's growing and uh, it's all, these guys are connecting with each other. They're meeting face to face, et cetera. They're meeting online on Zooms. How important for you it has connecting with new people uh, being in your career, in all stages of your career? So, so, I mean, whether we say connecting with new people, whether we say, you know, relationships, I mean, we have r- relationships and, mm-hmm. you know, and making new ones and growing those relationships have been utterly fundamental to my, to my success. Uh, and again, you know, this, this is a, you know, this is a, uh, another hour's conversation, you know, at, at some other time, but I guess the, you know, the, the, the cliff notes are that I can always very much go back to, let's say four or five key turning points in my, in my career where my, you know, level of success jumped, you know, jumped a level. And each time that was down to, you know, to somebody else effectively helping me with that, you know, helping me to that level of success. And it was a person that I'd either, gone out there and proactively tried to bring into my network because I knew they could add value or just because I found them and thought, you know, they would be great to have around and ultimately they did. But, you know, to be, if we're talking, let's say, you know, business success, you know, business growth here, I guess it probably applies anywhere that you can't really do anything on your own. And uh, I say you can't really, I'll, I'll rephrase and say no success happens alone. Uh, you know, so, so partnerships, or whatever word you want to use for that, be you know, relationships, partnerships, whatever. You know, they, they, they are they are fundamental to, to success in every area. So I, I am the world's biggest advocate for networking, you know, for for for, for growing your network and for uh, and for I guess you know mutually beneficial relationships. I mean, it's a how I do that is another whole conversation in in itself. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I can't advocate enough for 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 for, for building your network. Amazing. Thanks. And uh, another question from Cheryl. Your charitable foundation looks very impressive. What was the ca- uh, very impressive? What was the catalyst for this? Uh, it was an accident, to be honest. Uh, it, it, I mean, I guess I, I'd always, obviously, you know, donated to charities along along you know my, my life. I guess as 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 probably most of us have. Uh, but th- there was a very specific event um, back in about 2016 where I was at a football match. Uh, met a young lad who was trying to um, who was trying to raise well, his family was trying to raise money uh, for a, a life changing cerebral palsy operation that wasn't available on the NHS. I got talking to them, uh, and th- that that kind of ten second conversation t- turned into me telling them that I'd go pound for pound on whatever he raised over the coming few weeks. Uh, that uh, th- that ended up with uh, him ringing me on Christmas Day and landing me with a sixteen grand bill. Um, and uh, I, I, um, I ultimately kind of, you know, supported him and his family uh, emotionally as well as financially to, to, to kind of see through the operation. Uh, and he came out the other side of it, you know, uh, su- 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 successfully. Um, but being involved in that process, I just, I just very much enjoyed it. Really, I thought, you know, I can, I've got the chance to to use my network, you know, my resources to, you know, to help situations like Alfie. Uh, so we decided to create the charitable foundation off the back of it. And our ethos was always going to be that we'd raise money in fun ways because again, you know, my, I'm always, I'm always dragged to charity dinners and they're always crap. You know, I, I, just, I don't go there because I've got to support the person who's put it on. And I always thought I want to put on events that my friends, okay, they're going to come and support it because I've dragged them there the first time, but I want them to enjoy it so much that they'll come back in the future without me having to cajole them into it. So we'd raise money in fun ways and we'd deploy it onto cases that we could get emotionally attached to. And again, whenever I get asked this, you know, I would say, look, it's a very hard question to answer because it's not about poo-pooing somebody else's charity and it's not about what's right and what's wrong. But if I'm using my money or if I'm using you know, the money of my contacts, if I'm doing this in good conscience, I want them to be able to see exactly where it's gone. And I can't therefore feel that it's right for us to stick 50 grand into a million pound problem in, you know, in Africa or giving it for, you know, to build a well or to give it to another charity to do something. And that's not because that's wrong. It's, it's just, it's just not where we're at. You know, we want to be able to see it and, and touch it and feel it and be emotionally attached. So, so we do things that are very close to home. They tend to involve kids. Uh, and I always say that, you know, 
if we if we could look back in 10 years and 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 say that look I mean, we, we may have only helped 15 people but we've still got a relationship with all these 15 people uh and you know we, we we've, we've been part of the success journey with them then that that will that will make us successful so it's not really about quantum it's more about you know the the emotional attachment to to things to things that are uh, you know are, are close to our hearts and you certainly do the uh, the charity ball as well. I've been to Matt's twice, and it's uh, definitely the best one I've ever been to in terms of entertainment and uh, and a luxury experience. Uh, guys, any more questions? Otherwise, we're going to close this call. We've gone uh, almost half an hour over. Matt, thanks for being here for almost an hour now. Uh, we've got one more question from Lisa Thorne. Uh, how do we how, how do we get the invite? <laughs> you, you can be JP's plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's in Leeds. Uh, Cheryl says, thank you. Very interesting. We've got a few more other thank yous from uh, Mark, Cheryl, Sam, uh, Claire, Karen. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Uh, Matt, thanks for being the first Live 100 guest speaker. I really, really enjoyed it. I've taken, well, obviously, as you know, I've taken notes on all of your 10 points. And uh, from my own perspective, uh, there was a lot of value there. So yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to really I think about what you hey, want somebody to thank thanks for having me and uh, i hope uh, yeah like i said i hope my ramblings and, and disjointed notes uh, you know can uh, can, can pr prove of value to you all yeah mark said uh, would you like a podcast guest mark's got a crazy story of how he was diagnosed with terminal cancer to do an ironman triathlon uh, sam oh, says really? This has been a, I'm sure you can connect with Matt on social media. He'll find you or we'll see your message. Yeah, I, I'm, by the way, yeah, guys, add me for, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, uh, uh, TikTok, whatever. I'm the Matt Haycock. So that's C-H-E-M-A-T-T-H-A-Y. I swear, the Matt Haycock. Uh, but yeah, add me if you want to talk about podcasts, whatever, you know, drop me a line and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch for sure. Sam says, this has been so awesome. Thank you so much, JP and Matt. Claire says, thank you so much, Matt. Awesome, guys. I'm going to let you go. Uh, Matt, I'll let you go first. And then uh, I'll oh, say guys, goodbye. Thank you members. very much. Cheers. See Thanks for later. being here, man. See you soon. Bye.